Crystal, hello. Um, these. I really had to hook my vans up in my own underwear, bro. That's great. That's love, though, for real. Might be some things in here, but. Really? That's, that's good for me. You good with that? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. I haven't had underwear in three days, you know what I'm saying? You know what, you know what Mikey told me earlier that was probably the craziest shit I heard? He said, wait, what did you say? He said, I haven't shampooed my hair or brushed my teeth since being here. And I was like, bro, what? Brushing the teeth is crazy, bro. We're setting up the podcast room right now. We're putting on the 3D wall art. Right there. So that's going to go across the whole back of the wall. And then we're going to have ambient lighting. I have to get the lights to put on that. All right, so majority of the panels are in. We still need to do like another two rows probably. This is what it's looking like. So Joey had a good idea where we put this in the center wall, but have room behind it so that we can put LED strips on the back so it'll have backlighting. Oh, I need that. Just... Fruit of the Dragon, the pump from Alpha Lion, which is, what's the flavor? It's a kiwi dragon fruit, G6, 6, 6 p.m. EST. If you guys wanna check it out, code Alex for 15% off. I would say out of that flavor, I would compare it, like I said, it's a little bit of like a mix of Miami Vice and Lion's Blood, and Lion's, Blood's, Lion's Blood is my favorite pre-workout from them. It's a little bit on the sweeter side, but slightly sour. So if you guys wanna check it out, um, that'll be out tomorrow. The last pre-workout of the month, they did Pink Lemonade. It sold out in 30 minutes, which is insane. 30 minutes for a sellout for a pre-workout is insane. So if you guys wanna make sure you guys get this one. It's a VIP list. I'm pretty sure you get access to it for an hour. So make sure you guys go on the Alpha Line website, sign up for the VIP list, and you get uh, hour early access to it so that it doesn't sell out. Why you get that mask? Cause I'm, I'm feeling shysty today, bro. I'm feeling real shysty. Mm. Well, Mikey got it on, it's not a problem, but when Big Chris put it on, you know, it's abnormal. He copied you, yo? Who did it first? Oh, God, you know, that's it. You've been wearing shysty since football, buddy. <laughs> I said, Alex is cock-fucking today, yo. He's big, big time. All I know is Chris is going, we're having a 72 hour prayer service at church and Chris is definitely going to be there the whole 72 hours. Huh? you would be right next to me, bro, the whole I 72. <laughs> we'll stand with Chris and his sin, but Chris won't <laughs> drive six hours with you to the <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Couch actually upstairs. I'm not even gonna lie. You uh, did? Yeah, I went upstairs. You went after upstairs? I watched that coyote video. Damn, you recorded me. <laughs> demons. Yeah, we got demons in the crib. Did you say demon or semen? Uh, you gotta ask Chris about that one. Yeah, Chris has definitely been semening everywhere. <laughs> semening? I've been semening. Alice won't let me get anything, yo. He won't let me get any cheeks, bro. Gotta keep your boys accountable. I can't even have a girlfriend, bro. I told him I would be celibate, and he still won't let me have a girl, bro. This shit's crazy. Yeah. The truth. Do you, honestly, do you like a guy who's not confident enough to come talk to you? No, he's a little bitch. Exactly. Every woman wants a guy that's confident and will walk up you to You ever pull a girl in the club? I'm but I'm not um. I'm more of a bar guy, you know, I like going to bars. No, uh, I'm a cigar lounge guy. Yeah, I'm a cigar lounge guy now, too. You're at Alpha, you had your gallon jug, you had your camera in one hand or your bag, your gallon jug, I like waved at you and this is you, you're like... It's like picking up a kid at preschool and they see you in the line and they're like... I definitely, I definitely did not do that. Yes, you did. I did not do that. Let's talk about you. 
I got big nuts, bro. I gotta walk with a kid. Yeah. No, you, yeah. Go off, you, like, when you got a bulge between your legs, it's different, bro. It's different. What are you going right here? He's got the I would, I would know about that. Look at that. I'm dead at cooch. You got that cooch, bro. You do. Alex got a chode, bro. You know what that is, right? A chip. V, yo, stop playing with me. Yo, don't point that at me. V. V got a shiitake mushroom. <laughs> All right, so again, we are in the Elysium gym. Lately, this has been my favorite place to work out. We're getting more and more machines every week. Hopefully, we'll be able to like have everything officially finished. In the next few weeks, we got still, I think, like I don't know, six more machines. We're gonna try to get in here. We still gotta put in the hexagon lighting and all that. Gonna be going over training back. I uploaded a chest video, I think it was like a month ago that you guys had pretty good feedback on and I had some people asking me to do a similar video to that on back. Comes to training back, what I like to always do, it's pretty exhausting. A lot of people, they just go right into their workout. For me, I don't do that. Always just straight on pull down. So I've got this in all my videos. So I'm not gonna bore you guys on it again. I'm just gonna show you guys real quick what it looks like. So this is probably by far my favorite back exercise. I, there's not a workout that I do where I do not do straight arm pull down. So, but I see a lot of people when they do these, they do this wrong. So the way I do it is like when I grab this bar, I'm putting a lot of the pressure in my pinkies. I'm grabbing with all my fingers, but I put more of the pressure in my pinkies and I do that by almost turning my thumbs. I'll try to supinate my arms almost. So go like that. And when I pull it, I keep my scapula kind of back, meaning like my chest is a little higher. I keep my elbows close to my body, chest is high. Right here already, I feel the stretch in my upper lat. Like I feel it pulling on my upper back. Um, so you wanna make sure that you do that. So arms are very, very slightly bent. The tension is all in my upper lat right now when I do this, just sitting here. And then the tip here, chest up still, and I'm gonna pull in an arcing motion to my navel. A lot of people go like this, you don't wanna do that. You wanna arc it, pull with your lats the whole way through, keeping your elbows close to your body. Squeeze, whole way through, slow on the way up. Almost, I kinda lean into it almost as it pulls me up to get a full stretch. Contract, it's just keeping the tension where you want it to be at. Lighten the weight if you have to. All right, now we're going into our first mass movement. Now, when you talk about your back, you gotta realize like, when you're talking about your back, you have to make sure you're focusing on different parts of your back. A lot of people, when they go to train their back, all they're worried about is like hitting lats or like some people, beginners, like they'll just do pull downs. Like when I started, I used to do like four different exercises of like pull down based stuff and I barely did any rows. And yeah, that can give you a good amount of width and you can you still build your back that way. You gotta have a good balance of like hitting your lat, hitting your, uh, hitting your traps, hitting your rhomboids, hitting your like erectors, your lower back. Um, I think it's called your iliac lat. There's like so many different parts you should try to pick a movement to focus on. So that was more of an activation what we just did. So for our first rowing movement, which is gonna build more thickness, I use that loosely in that term. It's good, everything's gonna build your back with thickness, whatever it is. Rowing is just more of a movement to build out. When I say thickness, I'm, th I'm saying like building outward versus like pull downs and you focus more on this part of your back, you're focusing on the width. But we wanna build a little bit of everything. When I do a row, I keep my feet at the same. A lot of people do this, I don't like that. I keep my feet the same. And I arc this. So a lot of people when they do rows, they just go, oh, oh, a lot of rear delt, a lot of upper back. To target your lat a little bit more, I let it pull me down and I let it pull to the left side of my body, get a full stretch here and I arc it. And when I arc it, I'm pulling towards my navel again. I'm leading with my elbow, keeping it close to my body, pulling it close to my like belly button almost. And when I stretch it, I let it come out here. I don't let it drop just here. I let it come out almost a little bit more to get an extra stretch and row it in an arcing motion. A lot of people that just row it up and down, you're hitting reared up and traps when you do that. You don't want that. So we got the one arm dumbbell row, three to four, honestly, three working sets is what I'll do, eight to 10 reps each side, focusing on the stretch and the contraction and then going to failure. Now we're gonna be doing a more upper back focused row. Now again, there's different variations you can do with this stuff. So 
I love this machine because you can do like really good one-arm stuff. So whether I keep do a one-arm, keep it close to my body, I'm working more of my like lat, my overall lat, or which I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna target more of my upper back. The more I keep my elbows like in, like this, the more I'm gonna feel it in my lat, you're gonna get a little bit of rear delt and all that. But for me, I wanna work a little bit more of my traps, my rhomboid area. So I'm gonna keep it more parallel at row like this. Really squeeze my whole back together, the upper back. And I'm pulling through my elbow. Last exercise, we're gonna do a Dorian Yates, that's what people call it, the low row, the low plate loaded row. It's underhand. So there's two big important things here. Now a lot of people when they talk about building a bigger back, everybody's focused on their lats. That's like what everybody wants, I want bigger lats because it makes you look a lot wider from the front and from the back. So the issue is when people come to this, this machine and they're like, oh, I want to build my lats, but they're working more of the traps and rhomboids. Like majority of people when you come to this machine, chest is up high, you row like this. Now, this is good, this is still gonna work your whole entire back, but you're focusing a lot on like rhomboids, traps, and your lats as well. If you really wanna focus and like isolate your lat, which is what I love doing, especially like I feel like I can feel it in my lower lat, like the Christmas tree, is instead of keeping my chest up, I keep my chest more neutral, or if anything, I round it forward just a little bit. I really emphasize keeping my elbows locked in as close to my body as possible, kind of supinating a little bit of your arms. Don't let them roll out. Keep them really tucked in and tight, close to your body. It's a shorter range of motion. It's a lot shorter range of motion, but you got you really feel it contract in your lat. Pull through your elbows. Contract. Really focus on the stretch and the squeeze. All right. Here's how the physique is looking currently. I've been not on a diet whatsoever. Like the last week and a half has been pretty random, um, but I'm still looking decently lean. I'd say we're like 13% body fat right now. I still got like seven pounds probably that I want to lose till I get to like, you know, the shredded physique. I feel like I'm in a good balance where I look still somewhat full, I guess. I'm just not shredded like I usually am. Um, definitely not even getting bigger, which sucks. I've been training naturally for six years. Legs have gotten maybe a little bit bigger just because I've been training them more. But first, when I first started lifting, I wasn't really hitting them that much. Um, they look pretty good right there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed more of the informational type of stuff. Let me know if you guys want more of that. You sure you're gone? Yeah, 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 recording? yeah, I know what it is. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'll be doing that. I'll say like a whole clip when she forgot to film it. All right, so we're trying to, uh, we're making protein ice cream. I haven't made this in a while, but the boys are about to be on prep. Alex is going to teach me the hex. Yeah, because they need it, bro. Because Especially Mikey, because Mikey be eating like, yeah. snacks all the time here and there. So yeah. protein ice cream is probably the best thing to eat if you want to get shredded while like being somewhat full and like helping your craving. So you start off, I've done videos on this before, 500 grams of ice cubes first off. I like to blend the dry ingredients first, personally. What you got? Then you got xanthan gum. You can do this xanthan gum or guar gum. Now, this is gonna tell me how much I'm supposed to do. So I might, I might free ball it, freehand it. I mean, free ball it, free ball it. It's commando. It's, it's supposed to be like three grams. I mean, this looks, that looks like. But well, so usually you put PB Fit too, and cocoa powder or whatever, cocoa powder, whatever. Cocoa. 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 Well, we don't got that. You're gonna want to put about a scoop and a half of protein powder. All right, Nella, scoop and a half, dummy. Bitch, stop playing with him. Oh, there's that Marilyn. Yep. Yep. Sweetener, we need to get more natural sweetener. I don't know if we, I don't think we have any more sweetener. Uh, Where'd you get this, Whole Foods? What just happened? Wherever we went today. Yo, we're trying to record something over here, buddy. Chill out. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey's stressed right now. He's trying to buy a laptop. Man. A ga or a gaming oh. computer. All right, so this, I'm pretty sure it's like five to 10 grams. So we're just gonna shake that out. Of a natural sweetener. I heard monk fruit was good. Damn. That's pretty good. It's kind of gas. What? Yeah. It tastes like fucking sugar, like a better sugar. That's weird. So I like to I like to mix these first, just to like get the powder ground up, and then we'll part, start putting a like, little bit of almond milk in. All right, so we put about like 90 grams of uh, almond, milk. almond milk in it. I need, yeah. should I just use this? Yeah. Just. This isn't required, but we're gonna put a little bit of Greek yogurt in there just for gut health. Yeah, gut health, and it, it makes it thick. We love it thick. 
Yeah, really. Chris good. definitely does love it too. Bro, what? I hate just because my girl bets more than you. That ain't a girl, bro. <laughs> Huh? Ask him. He's a weirdo. I said bro, strawberry. I said, hey, I said. I said strawberry. I said this one, bro. You did not say that. You I said, brought it up for a reason. You said cookies and cream, and then you said. Oh my god, bro! All right, let's just take. Let me taste it. Let me. Let me taste this. See if we got to add it. Ew! It doesn't look right. I'm gonna get some of that. Yeah, it it tastes. Cool. It just tastes like vanilla. It looks like underwear right now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Tell them that one. Some uh, sugar-free syrup on that hoe. The chocolate. On that hoe. <laughs> Anybody else want one? I got ketchup right here, yo. I'm good. Stop playing. Michael, do you want some, bro? Guess what? Let me get. Let me get some of that. I can do my part. Come on. Can you put some sugar-free on that. Yeah. Is it for my friend Mikey? Alright guys, the verdict is 10 out of 10. Bro, with the syrup, bro, I'm telling you. Alright, it is the next morning. I uh, went to bed at like 2.30 a.m. and then got up at like 8.30. I'm trying to like still force myself to wake up early even though I've been going to bed kind of late. So I'm, I'm definitely lacking on the sleep, which is not good. But I'm going to be hosting a worship revival type night. And most likely it's going to be somewhere in Virginia. Um, what that means is basically I'm going to rent out like a venue and then I'm going to have my friends who can do like worship music and have like a little mini band as well as some speakers I'm probably going to speak and basically just create like an environment where people can come and see like Jesus and like you know meet like-minded people like that or even if you just have questions about it want to try to experience it for the first time I want it to be like a, a come and see moment meaning just like you just come you just come in and the rest follows um, you don't really come in with any certain uh expectations of the event and you just kind of let like the spirit guide you um so i really wanted to do something like that given that i have such a good you know big influence to use it in a positive way that can help like reinforce the kingdom in a more intimate way because like obviously i talk about on social media but that only goes so far so to create more of a one-to-one -one intimate way of doing that by having like a meetup or a worship night i feel like would be really really interesting so i want to see it be successful so right now we, i think we have like 300 spots left for the eventbrite i'll have the link down below in the description if that ends up getting filled you know more after this video goes out then i could always you know get a bigger venue but i don't know so if anybody has any connections with that whether it's worship stuff or um could maybe help out with certain things when that does come around the goal would be to do it at the end of this month if not early april um and it will be somewhere in virginia just email me um at official alex you make at gmail.com but yeah i feel like that'd be really good because uh, I love worship music and I love being in environments like that and it would be just really cool to see you know if we did that maybe like once a month somewhere uh, but yeah all right so I've been reading this book it's called the all of God by John Bevere I hope I'm saying that right but uh, today's chapter was really really good one one of the main points of it was you will serve whom you fear if you fear God you'll obey God if you fear man, you ultimately obey man's desires. If you seek to obey others' desires, you can no longer be a true servant of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Nugget, can you be a little quieter, please, this morning? Um, which is true. And I posted on my story about, like, fearing God. And some, like, I guess not, like, an atheist dude slid up. And was like, here, this is the problem I have with the religion. Why would you fear something that's supposed to give you joy? And, like, you have it all wrong. It's not, a, it's not a fear that scares you away. Rather, it's a fear that brings you towards, like, almost like an awe and a reverence. Like, the way I, would I explain it is, like, when I was, like, young, like, eight years old, and I would go to the zoo, and I would see, like, the lions, I would look at them in awe, although I was afraid of them. Cause, but it's, like, having a, a respect for realizing his power and authority, and that respect and that holiness drives you towards him. And that fear that you get for him casts out all other fears. So there's nothing to fear that man can give you because God's... I don't know how to explain it. Does this make sense, what I'm saying? All right. Yeah, I forgot to do an outro after that, but that was pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I love doing videos like this again. I say this all the time, like more of the vlogging, just recap of my weekend. Um, just kind of recording what I want to record, not recording to get the most amount of views, but recording to make an audience that can relate to me and my life and I try to do it in a positive way. So I appreciate you guys who watch through the whole videos, the ones like these, which aren't meant to get as many views. Then it's just me having fun. And one day I can look back on these when I'm like older and have a family and all that. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. We're trying to hit a million subscribers on YouTube as soon as possible. 
um, Alpha Lion dropped today as well as Raw Gear, the Eternal Life collab, which is the collab I did with them. It's like a Christian drop. It's going to be live today as well. If you guys want to use code Alex over there to uh, help support me, I appreciate it. See you guys Wednesday. Until next time, peace out.